Hi folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, last December was really bad for cloud. We had about a six week period from late November, early December through to mid January where we only had like one decent clear night. Um, this April, however, has more than made up for it. It's been night after night of uh, clear nights and we're in the middle of galaxy season. So I've been taking the opportunity to um, look and photograph lots and lots of galaxies. However, last night I decided to try and take a photograph of an object called a globular cluster, which is ideally positioned for me in the sky at the moment. The balloons you can see in the background, incidentally, are um, from Miss Camping Astronomer's socially distanced 18th birthday garden party that she had a couple of days ago. And you can probably just about hear Pebbles the cat meowing in the background. What is it, Pebs? You're a bit too hot outside. I think he wants to go in. My name's John, and I make videos on camping, astronomy, and walking. If you like what you see in this video, then please check my channel out, as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. Globular clusters are very beautiful objects and they lend themselves very well to uh, beginners at astrophotography. They're very bright, um, which means that they're easily picked up in a single exposure at as short as 10 to 15 seconds, even with the moon out. So um, you can take a picture and know you've definitely got your target. Um, they're also easily visible in small telescopes like this one here and even a pair of binoculars will pick up a globular cluster perhaps looking like a, a little bit of an out of focus star. A globular cluster as the name suggests is a kind of tightly packed ball of stars and um, there are hundreds of thousands of stars within each cluster. They're very ancient objects uh, some of the oldest objects in the universe, in fact. In spiral galaxies like ours, they're typically found outside the plane of the galaxy. So the galaxy is like a big disk, basically, and the globular clusters sit in the kind of galactic halo, which is the area above and, and below the disk. And the stars that are contained within the uh, globular cluster are some of the first stars formed when the or its associated galaxy was formed. Um, and typically they're between 11 and 13 billion years old. So um, not that long after the universe was first formed in the Big Bang. The target last night is a globular cluster called M3 or uh, Messier 3, and it contains about half a million stars. It was first discovered by a chap called Charles Messier in the mid 1700s. And what Messier was doing at the time was scanning the sky looking for comets. And he kept stumbling across objects that initially he thought were comets and then decided weren't. And what he decided to do was to write a list of these objects down of not comets so that he didn't waste any further time on them and he gave them all names or numbers and locations. And uh, M3 or Messier 3 was in fact the first object that, that he found. Ironically, Charles Messier set this list up of things that he wasn't interested in. And it's since become a, a tick list for amateur astronomers and amateur astrophotographers for things that they do want to look at. So this and has become the standard list of objects that astronomers look for. And in fact, um, there are events called Messier marathons where people will spend an entire night up and try and tick everything off on Messier's list. I think his original list had about 100 items on it. Um, it's now up to about 110. Uh, I think I've found something like 90 out of the 110 
the ones that I haven't found so far are ones that I simply can't get from my back garden because they're uh, typically either uh, too faint or too low on the horizon. So I need to tick off those last few and, and probably get away from home to do it. Anyway, back to last night then. It was a beautiful clear night. Up to now, my attempts to photograph globular clusters haven't been that great. I've usually uh, sort of regarded them as an afterthought when I'm taking a photograph of something else. So I've often only gathered maybe 10, 15 minutes exposure time on them. And it certainly is possible to get a photograph of these objects using this very, very short accumulated exposure time. But the pictures that you see in books and things are, are fantastic for globular clusters. They, they look really lovely objects. So I decided to focus on a globular cluster this time round. So um, let's now go back to last night and uh, see how I got on. I once again use my standard setup with the, my smallest 60 millimeter refractor. Uh, those of you who've seen my uh, previous videos on the use of small telescopes uh, will know that perhaps on the face of it this isn't optimal for a target like the um, globular cluster um, but for a beginner like me it actually makes a lot of sense So in the end last night then, I was uh, trying to get a total of an hour's worth of exposures but um, the battery on my camera was uh, beginning to start flashing red so I wanted to take a couple of shots of the moon as well. So what I did was I stopped after I'd done 45 one minute exposures and took a few snaps of the moon also. Um, but yeah, uh, when I processed the results I was... Uh, pretty pleased with what I got for um, the globular cluster to be honest. Um, considerably better than I've got before and almost certainly caused by a longer total exposure time of 45 minutes instead of say 10 or 15 minutes. So overall yep yeah, I'm uh, quite chuffed with the result and I had a, a nice evening outside. So I'll put the a single shot of the moon up now and uh, the processed picture of the globular cluster and I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheerio!